2006 Chevy Uplander with a 3.5 liter engine. Uh, what we are doing today is a EVAP emission trouble code and it is a P0449. Let me get you a shot of the scan tool. Little, a little tip here for the circuit low fault codes is that is generally an open circuit when you get a low code. So that's either gonna be a problem with the wire or the solenoid itself. So next thing is we're gonna go underneath the vehicle and uh, try to locate this thing and do some checks on it. Well, unfortunately I am laying on the ground for this one. And uh, what I did first is locate the gas tank and follow the lines from up front. And what I found is this vent solenoid is buried. It is actually above the gas tank. So one of the first checks that I did was to disconnect these connectors and just take a look because these are known for corrosion problems and I didn't have any issue there. So next step is do some checks at the solenoid above the tank. Let me show you where this thing's at. Okay, so here's the fuel tank. As you follow the camera, this comes around the middle of the vehicle. There's the exhaust system right here and the other end of the tank. And this is the this is the the filter part of the vent. Uh, the electrical wiring is way back in there. So I'm gonna use this opportunity uh, to plug a tool that I just got. And uh, man, this thing, I, I wish I would have filmed my initial reaction because this is the first time I've used it. It's, it's a piercing probe and it is, what is it called? I just got this from my friends at AES Wave. This is uh, Phil's, let me zoom in on that, I can't see. I'm blind. It is Phil's electrical probe. And it says uh, technician of the year on that. So that's pretty cool. I mean, this guy is a tech who made a, a, a piercing tool that um, was <laughs> absolutely critical in, in what I, I was doing on this truck. And a little, another shout out to uh, a friend of mine. He's a, a moderator on my forum. His name is Tyler. And uh, he posted this on my tool section on something that he's been using. And as soon as I saw it, I'm like, I gotta have one of those. And I'll tell you what, for where this wiring is located, let me see if I can get my camera in there and show you. It is ridiculous. So, it's this connector that I can't even reach with my finger. Um, I have a white and a, and a pink wire. You can see that I have the probe already adapted to the white wire. And I'm gonna stay on that. We'll check that first and then I'll show you the pink one. Well, uh, but you can tell that this probe was made by a technician. I'll show you in a minute on the end of it what it has that allowed me to actually use the probe to spread these term these wires apart so I could actually adapt to it and I, I was just uh, really really liking that I, I love a tool that is made by a technician and uh, you know props to Phil man that's awesome so hopefully hopefully Phil you get some you get some sales out of this video I'm, I'm like that pumped about this tool but anyway thank you Phil and thank you Tyler for telling me about this thing so anyway, I'm on the control wire for this vent solenoid and let's get a voltage reading first. Uh, this, this probe has a, has, it has a brass end so I can just adapt my uh, probe right to the brass or on the end of it, you can put a uh, banana plug in there. Uh, I think so, anyway, let me see. Does that fit? Oh, nice. So actually you can put your banana style probe, I think I need a second hand to push that in a little further, yeah. You can put your probe right in the end of that. That's pretty sweet. Cool, so you can go either here or you can go on the end of that with a banana style uh, plug. 
Uh, but anyway, let's get a voltage reading and uh, let's troubleshoot this thing. As you can see, we have zero volts on this control wire. And I did check this before I started filming on the feed and it is good. So with a zero on the control, what that tells me is either my solenoid is open or I have a bad connection right there. And so before I call the solenoid as being bad, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that the computer driver and the wiring from here out is good. And so the way we're gonna do that is we're going to use a test light to battery positive and turn the driver on with the scan tool. So I'll show you what I'm doing. All right, this is tough to do underneath the car. So um, without um, having a 10 foot dumper wire, I'm actually going to use my, I'm gonna use my power probe as my, as my power feed, okay? Um, that's not really helping the camera there, but uh, so you see the red light turning on there. That's gonna be my power feed that I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna actually just take my test light to the end of my power probe and I'm flipping the switch on my power probe okay my test light lights when it finds a ground so that's the test that i need to do onto here now put my test light in the tool my test light's connected to battery positive now let me flip the switch on my power probe to um, give my test light power. I'm not putting power into this control circuit with the power probe. Let's, let's be clear on that. If I use my power probe and put power in this circuit and then turn that driver on, I am going to cook the computer. You need to know what you're doing using this tool. You know what? You need to know what you're doing using a jumper wire. So be careful. I am using my power probe as my test lights power feed okay so when I flip the switch I'm sending power through my test light bulb into this computer control circuit so watch I'm gonna flip the switch right now and what you'll notice is that light does not light all right next step I need to turn the driver on with the scan tool okay so we'll go back I need to go to my functional test menu. And I need to go to my output tests. I need to come down here to my EVAP vent solenoid and continue. And then all I'm going to do is turn that driver on right there. Okay, see the check mark? Turn it off. Turn it on, right? With that on now, when I do this test, my test light should light. Let's go back to the tool. All right, let's give my test light some power now. There it is. Test light is lit. That is a good driver. That is good wiring all the way from here to the computer. Okay, so I, I use the test light because it's what I'm familiar with. I like the test light telling me that the driver is good we can actually use this power probe for the same thing. So let me show you that method. Some of you are thinking, why don't you just use the power probe? Well, I can, but I gotta tell you guys, you do this wrong, you're gonna cook the computer, okay? First thing is, I'm not touching the switch where my thumb is. Do not put power on this control circuit to the computer. All I'm gonna do is touch this to there. See the green light that just showed up? Uh, that green light is indicating a ground and what I can do is... Hey, hey Pete, can you come here and give me another hand for a second? I just want, I just want you to work my scan tool for me. Alright, see the green light on the power probe? Okay, go ahead and turn that off now. Is the check mark on off? Now it is. There you go. All right, see the green light went out? All right, turn it back on. 
Okay, cool. So that right there with the power probes telling you that that driver is good. Just using the, the light. And what you can do too, if, if some of you guys like the beep, I mean, this is going to be a little bit loud maybe, but... All right, hit that button again, Pete. Turn it off. Turn it on. Turn it off. Okay, cool. Thank you. Oh, that's fine. All right, so you guys saw that uh, you can use the power probe for multiple different ways using the the uh, green uh, LED light that's on the tool itself. And um, I, again, I was not pressing the button. That button would be in this in this application with, when you want to energize something, and that's not what I'm trying to do. Um, be careful, guys. Be careful. If the, if the results of the test are not exactly what you think, uh, don't just start flipping this switch. Know what you're doing. So again, back to the test on the car. This control wire is good from here all the way up. And uh, the last check that you guys didn't see was the um, feed wire. You gotta make sure you have a good feed. So before we call the solenoid as being bad, all we did was check the control so far. And I told you that I checked the feed before I started filming. All right, sorry, I couldn't show you switching that tool around. Uh, but this is the power wire now. Yeah, you see we have 12 volts on that. So that's a good feed. And our, our control was good. The zero volt reading on the control wire told us the solenoid is open. Uh, no question about it, it needs a vent solenoid. We can actually check this, of course, with the power probe as well. So I'll show you that. I had a heck of a time right here trying to find a good ground for my multimeter. Uh, but connected to the battery, we're good. So, touch on this. See the red light for power. And I'm gonna turn that beeper off because that is really loud. And you see not only we got a red light, but we have 12 volts on that feed wire. This tool was just phenomenal for this job. And I'll tell you why. See the end of it? How it has like a blade on it? It's, pl it's made of like a hard plastic. What that allowed me to do is, here, I'll show you on another harness. What the end of this allowed me to do is it allowed me without having to reach in there and I couldn't, it allowed me to go in like this and it allowed me to push that in and turn, turn this which allowed me to spread the wires apart and then I was able to make enough space to get that tool in to hook that wire. So, um, you know, you could definitely tell that somebody was thinking when they made that tool. And then the end of it, just so you see the, see the probes, uh, the end of it, it has a hook. And you can see when I pull this open, you see it has like a little bed of nails. So it doesn't leave like a gaping hole in a wire, just some little tiny t uh, little pinholes. So um, I am a fan. I am a fan. Thank you again, Tyler. Thank you, AES Wave. And thank you, Phil, <laughs> whoever you are, for making this pretty sweet tool. So that's it. Pretty tough location. This EVAP vent solenoid and where it lives. Had to use a little bit of uh, creative tools there to access the wiring. And um, pretty standard, straightforward test from there. Check your power, check your ground, sorry, check your power, check your control. And in this case, control being ground side switched. All of these procedures I've shown you guys before and all of this stuff I have listed in, this would be section three material of my book. Thanks guys, I'll catch you next time.